MCAT 2017 CRAM, Biochemical and Biological Foundations of Living Systems. Passage 19, Sufoxidin Disdiffusion versus MEK-APCR for MRSA detection. As you view the reading of the passage, you'll notice some highlighted snippets of text. What I want you to do is garner meaning from these specific selections in order to answer the questions that follow. Good luck and happy reading. Paragraph 1. Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA for short, is an antibiotic-resistant organism of increasing clinical importance in the hospital setting as well as in the general community. This organism overcomes environmental antibiotic pressures by acquiring resistance from other bacterial species or from free DNA in the environment. Beta-lactam antibiotics bind to Staphylococcus aureus via penicillin-binding penicillin proteins, PBPs for short, thereby inhibiting cell wall synthesis. And therefore, bacterial replication to overcome beta-lactam antibiotics MRSA creates a mutated cell wall protein called PBP2A, which has diminished affinity for penicillins. PBP2A is encoded by the MECA gene. Presence of the MECA gene can be tested by polymerase chain reaction, whereas presence of PBP2A is tested by latex agglutination technique, as shown here. Both of these methods are highly sensitive for methicillin resistance, but are relatively costly. Two, assess the utility of lower cost methods of rapidly detecting MRSA in under-resourced settings, researchers compare the sensitivity and specificity of MEC a PCR with the standard, more economical disc diffusion method, as shown here in Figure One. In this method, an antibiotic disc is placed in a petri dish, populated with MRSA, the gray region. At 18 hours of incubation, the zone of bacterial clearance around the disc. Is measured. So here we have a huge zone of clearance, second largest, third largest, not so much in B. If it is greater than 19 millimeters, this indicate complete methicillin susceptibility. So it looks like there's some methicillin susceptibility going on here, and therefore the absence of MRSA. Okay. So non-methicillin resistant bacteria here. The researchers found that of 500 Staphylococcus aureus isolates tested, 300 were methicillin resistant by MEC-A probe. Of the 300 resistant isolate, 270 were detected by disc diffusion. Of the remaining MEK-A negative isolates, 150 were detected by dif disc diffusion. Okay, they concluded that disc diffusion is an acceptable method of MRSA detection in under-resourced laboratories. Figure one, zones of clearance around antibiotic impregnated discs Quadrant A demonstrates a large zone of clearance, greater than 19 millimeters. With quadrants C and D, demonstrating smaller zones, and quadrant B showing no zone of clearance. All right. MRSA becomes resistant to penicillins by all of the following methods except A. Acquisition of resistance genes from free DNA in the environment. B. 
alteration of cell wall antibiotic binding proteins, C, active efflux of antibiotics through proteins in the cell wall, or D, acquisition of resistance genes from other species. I'll give you a moment to decide. All right. Okay, so the passage mentions that MRSA can acquire DNA from other species existing in the environment. Okay, so both answer choice um, D and A are out. And the DNA encodes altered penicillin binding proteins. So answer choice B is also out. Although employed by other types of bacteria to overcome other types of antibiotics, active efflux of penicillin is not employed by MRSA, but it's a really cool aggressive technique used by other bacteria. Okay? All right. In a disc diffusion test that indicates complete methicillin resistance in Staphylococcus aureus, we would expect the zone of clearance around the antibiotic disc to measure A, 20 millimeters, B, 18 millimeters, C, 9 millimeters, or D, 0 millimeters. I'll give you a moment to decide. All right. Okay, so from the passage, 9 or 18 millimeter zones of clearance would be seen in intermediate susceptibility to methicillin. So these are out. A zone of clearance of 20 millimeters or greater would indicate complete susceptibility to methicillin. So answer choice A is also out. Zero millimeters would indicate complete resistance to methicillin, okay? So the correct answer choice is answer choice D, zero millimeters. Sensitivity refers to a test ability to correctly identify a condition. If MEC-A PCR is the gold standard for detection of methicillin resistance in Staphylococcus aureus, what is the sensitivity of distribution for detection of methicillin resistance? Is it A, 54%, B, 90%, C, 60%, or D, 30%? I'll give you a moment to decide. All right. Okay, so the passage says, that 300 Staphylococcus isolates were found to be methicillin resistant by MEC-A PCR, okay? Therefore, this ought to be the denominator in our calculation of sensitivity. Of these 300, the passage also mentions 270 were methicillin resistant by distiffusion. Therefore, our final equation or sensitivity would be 270 divided by 300, which when multiplied by 100 is going to yield 90%. So um, this test, distiffusion, was 90% sensitive when compared to the gold standard MEC-A PCR. All right? Okay. Specificity refers to a test ability to successfully rule out a condition. If MEC-A PCR is, again, the gold standard for detection of methicillin resistance in Staphylococcus aureus, what is the specificity of the distiffusion test for methicillin resistance? Is it A, 10%, B, 100%, C, 75%, or D, 50%. I'll give you a moment to decide. All right. Okay, so this question might have been tricky to some, 
But it's really simple if you just read carefully and perform some basic algebra. So we are trying to assess how often this diffusion was correct in ruling out methicillin resistance, okay? Another way to think about this is how often did the test correctly identify methicillin susceptibility? So by MECA probe, 200 isolates, that's, you know, 500 total minus the 300 found to be methicillin resistant, were methicillin susceptible. So our denominator is going to be 200 methicillin susceptible isolates. Let me just write that out for you. So 200 in our denominator, okay? And of these, 150 were correctly detected by this diffusion. So when I, multi when I divide 150 by 200 and then multiply that by 100 to convert the decimal to a percentage, I'm going to get 75% specific for methicillin resistance. I mean, for methicillin, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Okay, so that's our correct answer. A novel antibiotic used to treat MRSA would ideally require which of the following characteristics? A, requires a high serum concentration in order to show efficacy. B, has a bulkier side chain than existing penicillin formulations. C, can be tested by both disc diffusion and PCR methods, or D, does not bind to a penicillin binding protein. I'll give you a moment to decide. Okay, so first of all, let me say this. The method of testing that can be used uh, for the antibiotic is not going to be the foremost consideration in this case, okay? An antibiotic that acts at a low and not a high serum concentration would be preferable in order to avoid potential side effects. And um, the size of the molecule's side chain doesn't matter as much as the requirement of a penicillin, penicillin binding protein. So the ideal antibiotic would have a mechanism of action that does not require the penicillin binding protein at all, okay? It would find some other means of attack. All right.